Hey everybody, this is Midnight Update. I'm Seamus Byrne. Welcome to Wednesday, 25th of February. Tonight, a feature interview with Ruslan Kogan, founder of Kogan Technologies and the maker of the Kogan Agora handset the Android phone that hasn't quite made it to market and we talk a little bit about that as well as the history of Kogan and Kogan Technologies, how he came to to launch the company, what he's hoping to achieve and how far the company has come. So we're here at uh, Kickstart 2009 and I'm having a chat with Ruslan Kogan from Kogan Technologies. Um, so can you tell us a bit about how you arrived at uh, personally, how you arrived at uh, starting the company? Yeah, well, at the time I was working at Accenture uh, doing IT consulting and management consulting and I was in the market for an LCD TV. I went and, you know, as I do with any gadget that I buy, researched it quite a bit, looked at prices, checked out all the different shops and I was upset that I couldn't afford one and I was, you know, I had a decent job and, yeah, still couldn't afford one and I had a few contacts over in Asia that I'd previously uh, purchased bits and pieces from and I started investigating as to what the cost of an LCD TV is. When I realised that what sort of prices you could bring them into Australia for and what sort of prices the shops were selling them at, I saw that there's a crazy gap in the market and I decided that if I introduced this product with a lean business model, one that cuts out all the middlemen, will be able to provide consumers with much better prices and it's a product that everyone's after so you know everyone would win out of it. Um, I've always had a passion for technology so even from the age of nine when I built my first computer to then you know it was shortly after that the, I was so excited because I upgraded it to one meg of RAM and could install Windows 3.1 and you know, been very heavily involved with all of that all along. Through high school I made money and made a living by buying broken mobile phones from computer shops, fixing them and reselling them in the trading post. So gadgets and technology was always my thing and it's something that I enjoy a lot. Um, and uh, how, how do you feel about the first uh, few years of the company and uh, um, can you tell us a bit about, I guess, the growth in terms of uh, volume? I, I've heard you talk about the uh, uh, containers of ships, uh, shipping containers you've had coming in. Yeah, it's been great. The public's really embraced what we're doing and educated consumers out there are able to look at our products, line them up side by side by others and realise the great value that we're offering. Businesses even since from the start grown by about 20% month on month which has been pretty crazy. We've sold over 50,000 products uh, Australia wide where and you know there's no sign of that growth stopping even in economic conditions like this we're still growing month on month. I guess that's also partly to do with people looking for more value these days and you know researching their purchases a lot more and that's not going to stop. We're aggressively entering the UK and USA markets this year we've already entered into the New Zealand market and you know it's not just Aussies that love a bargain everyone around the world loves a bargain and that's what the Kogan business model is here to do. Well business has been growing very very fast in our first container was a 20 foot container and it was about a you know three month turnaround for that container if you look at the business now we've got around 20 40 foot containers on the water at any given time so we've got a lot of product on the water a lot of product being purchased from our website and the Kogan brands in high demand. It's a very streamlined business model where anything that's not our specialty we outsource. So, you know, we outsource our warehousing and distribution and deliveries and shipping. So, in terms of expanding the business to other countries, it's just a matter of finding a warehousing partner and a distribution partner. As soon as that's done, you're ready to send containers from China to their local ports, get the goods into the warehouse and sold to the customer base in that country online using the same efficient business model. So I guess one of the other big things is obviously the um, the attempt to put out an Android phone and it didn't quite come together as you'd hoped. Um, in general, it seems like it was a pretty good um, global branding exercise for Kogan ultimately. Um, so, you know, was it purely a branding exercise or, you know, was this the real deal? Oh, it was definitely the real deal. It was something that 
I was very excited about, everyone at Kogan was very excited about. We put a lot of hard work into it and it was, you know, in the very, very final stages before hitting the market. Um, in terms of anyone who doubts it, we've got, you know, I've got a few of the phones here with me in the room. We can go play with them, check them out. But, you know, the Kogan Agora will get it released eventually after the redesign and it's something we're, you know, adamant on launching very soon. So earlier today I was chatting with Ruslan Kogan about uh, Kogan Technologies in general uh, and the products he has available. Uh, obviously one of the big talking points surrounding Kogan is the Agora phone that they attempted to release with the Android um, operating system. Now uh, I'm here later the same evening uh, and Kogan has uh, kindly brought out one of his prototype versions of the phone to kind of help just prove that there's some doubters out there who think the whole thing was just a big uh, marketing exercise and there was never really a Google phone to begin with. So, here it is. Now, I'm just going to wander up here close so you can get a good look and see this is uh, one of his working prototypes. Now, the touch screen itself um, isn't calibrated, he's saying, so it's a bit flaky, but we can definitely um, have a bit of a quick look around um, and see that everything that that makes a Google phone is in there. Um, you know, things just kind of clearly just needed a bit of tweaking, but um, but ultimately this is the real deal. Um, and uh, yeah, you can see we can flick around the place. Um, compared to the HTC phone, it's obviously a completely different form factor. Um, if you can see the, uh, the keyboard style um, and uh, the screen, a different form factor, but uh, this is pretty cool, and uh, if we, yeah, we can drill into some of these areas. It, it doesn't currently have the. Um, well, you can see it's trying to load in a web page, but there's no SIM in it. Um, this is definitely a real deal. Um, yeah, you know the features that are in there work, and clearly, if it had a SIM, it might place a call. But um, uh, as you were saying, it does at the moment. It's not really calibrated, um, but we can, you know, clearly have a bit of a look around and. Um, see all kinds of things. Um, so yeah, so there's no question that the uh, the phone itself is a real deal kind of phone, um, and it seems like they were pretty close to launch. So um, there it is. Just thought it'd be good to actually uh, show the phone itself as separate from the videos that uh, Ruslan himself released to the web, because uh, clearly people feel like, well, yeah, that's you. Um, so this is me and I have the phone here, it's a real phone, it's definitely running Android, and, uh, and that's that. That's all for tonight's update. Uh, we're gonna have a little bit more of the interview tomorrow and maybe some of the day's news, uh, but until next time, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget you can join us weeknights around midnight Sydney time, or for more daily coverage, visit midnightupdate.com.